Welcome to Season 5 of Swiss Impact with Banerjee. I'm Svieta. And I am Ben. The topic of Season 5 is Impactful Investments. How can you make a difference with your capital? Our guests who are managing impact investment funds, business owners, thought leaders, will empower you to invest with impact. In this season, we will showcase various impact investment funds who are contributing to SDGs, better known as Sustainable Development Goals, as defined by the United Nations. There is no excuse. Shift your capital to create positive change in our world. Your children will be happier, you will feel fulfilled, and make money. We will broadcast every Friday afternoon at 5 p.m. Central European Time here on Swiss Impact with Banerjee's. You get more when you give back. So always invest with impact. Good morning, evening, and afternoon to everyone. Welcome to Season 5, Episode 12, which is dedicated to impactful investment opportunities. And, and today, we would like to dedicate our show to the new King of United Kingdom. So that's King Charles III, who acceded the throne on 8 September. The reason is King Charles, I have to get used to, to the word King Charles, because I always knew him as Prince, has been a very strong force behind climate action, biodiversity, and environmental protection. Apparently, already in 1969, he had written to the British Prime Minister Harold Wilson of that time about the dwindling salmon stock in the Scottish water, saying, I'll quote, people are notoriously short-sighted when it comes to questions of wildlife. So just like I mentioned last time, he thinks the same. He thinks that the time of talking is over and now it is the time to act. Indeed, he is a man of action and himself has been very actively engaged. Just listen to his last talk on COP26. So King Charles started the famous and influential Sustainable Market Initiative and other great initiatives. And I sincerely hope that he continues with such initiatives, especially now with his position as a king of one of the world's most powerful economy and country. Yeah. And, you know, I'm originally from India, which is also a Commonwealth nation. So um, just for the audience, so we know that you are watching us from all over the world and we are available on social media, smart TV, podcasts. But if you want to get the most news out of us, you can just go and look into youtube.com slash Swiss Impact. All right. Thanks. For reminding the audience now, story time, Ben. What did you prepare so, so for today? Today, we are going to talk about women empowerment. Yay, finally. <laughs> so I find it a shaming that even though some may say that we are at the peak of our evolution, and yet half of humanity is discriminated against. Only the scale differs from country to country. So for example, in the West, uh, for example, if you look at Netherlands, which is one of the most advanced nation in the world, where I come from, women on average receive lesser salary than their main counterparts. On the other hand, other scale, in Afghanistan, women cannot even go out of their home without men. So the fact remains that if we really want to make a difference, then we must educate and support women and very, very importantly, educate girls to start with. But maybe you can also speak on the clear reasons which we notice from our impact investment ecosystem why we should educate exactly. girls. Exactly. So if you look into the ecosystem of the impact investment, basically at the moment, three things come to my mind. One is that we are aware that massive majority of farmers in, in emerging markets, like in Africa, are women. So supporting them really makes a huge difference to the societies and economies of this region. And believe me when I say it is not like that. During the COVID, when the support was going to all over the world, the women in Africa did not get as much support as they should have got. Secondly, we know from experience of microfinance, which is one of the strongest points of uh, impact investment, that loans given to women not only have greater social impact, but they are also more secure. 
So the chance that you get back your money by giving it or lending it to a woman is far higher. And, of course, and, of course. <laughs> and there are a lot of statistical uh, proofs and, and research documents on that. And lastly, there's a very old saying that if you educate a man, you educate an individual. While when you educate a girl, you educate a family. And that really is very visible when you look into health, nutrition, values of families growing up when the girls or the women are educated. So with this, I repeat that we need to continue with our action to support and facilitate girls to become future leader. It is, to be selfish, it is for our own welfare. Well, absolutely. I can only confirm that being a woman, <laughs> that when we have a strong foundation to build on, have creativity to solve complex issues, ability to lead and empower others is thriving. So now, with this, I'd like to welcome our guests of today, Mr. Lars Collin and Mrs. Rebecca Riemer, the founders of the World Guide Foundations. Please come to our studio. Hello, good day. Hi there, how are you? Where are you guys? Absolutely fine. fine. In Copenhagen and uh, enjoying a view that's not dissimilar to what's behind you. So, uh, <laughs> just for you we got this view today <laughs> great thank you for joining us today and as not everyone yet knows you we'd like to provide a short introduction to our audience and i'd like to start of course with a woman Rebecca Rim. so you are first <laughs> uh, let's start with saying that you are a medical doctor entrepreneur chairperson and philanthropist and have over 30 years of experience from public and private sector management. You're also specialized in public health and worked for Ministry of Health and later in Finance Ministry. You have been a volunteer scout guide leader throughout your career and next to holding numerous positions, you have also served as the president of the Ole Baden Powell Society which is supporting the World Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts. And on top, you have received many awards, including the Princess Benedict Award. <laughs> Amazing. We are so thrilled to have you with us, Rebecca. It's an honor. And now to Lars. Lars, you are the chairman of the World Scout Foundation. You're a mathematician, serial entrepreneur, best-selling author, and philanthropist. You have started more than 25 businesses and known so, uh, as a leader and a strategic leader, right? You have written five books on leadership and strategy, what a surprise, <laughs> and which were published in nine languages. Your philanthropic work focuses on enabling young people throughout the world to be active citizens, leading positive change in their communities which is actually the vision of the World Scout movement, where you have been engaged for four decades. You also received numerous awards, <laughs> including Denmark Men's of the Year, the Bronze Wolf, and of course, the Prince Princess Benedict Award, <laughs> among others. And today, you both are engaged in the World Guide Foundation, which turns today's girls and young women into tomorrow's leaders in their own lives, families, local communities, in business and civil society. That sounds very promising. So we are looking forward to learn more about it and your stories. Yeah, so, so Vivica, we start with you. So what is your story? Why is empowerment of girls and young women so very important for you? It's extremely important for me because um, I have seen so many girls all over the world who really deserve to have the same opportunities as I had. I grew up and had a lot of opportunities, including Girl Scouting, but uh, all those young women in the whole world, they really deserve to have the same opportunities. And that's why I'm really engaged in this. Thank you. And, and the way I came to this is, is really um, I grew up in a family where, where, well, my mother was 
the mother. Um, she had an education, but she was the one to take care of everything. Um, and my father was the outgoing one. Uh, he was he was engaged in he was an architect, but he was engaged in a lot of different things, including scouting and uh, lion clubs and uh, a lot of things. He really engaged uh, with other people. He engaged with society, and um, that's really something I learned from. So he's one of my role models. My mother also was a role model, and and my next role model was uh, actually my. Um, aunt and my uncle, they were both um, medical doctors, and that really inspired me very much. So that's that's why I uh, started uh, studying uh, medicine, and and uh, and now today I'm I have the I'm uh, a specialist in in public health. So so that's one of the reasons. And then another um, role model was really uh, is uh, Lars, my husband. And he inspired me to to start um, studying um, other things than medicine. Uh, so I I have a, a bachelor's in in uh, in management and, and leadership. So that's that's my background. But over all those years, I engaged in with Girl Scouting and and Boy Scouting too. Um, but Girl Scouting was really what uh, what meant a lot to me and. Um, I have had a, a number of functions um, and I have learned a lot of things being a leader um, in Girl Scouting. And uh, I wish that everyone, every girl could, could have the same opportunities um, like in their career, in their uh, uh, volunteer life, etc. So on top of, of all those activities, we also raised four children and I'll say I'll say I, I had my share of that. <laughs> <laughs> but but having having met uh, so many girls girls and young women all over the world and especially in Africa really meant that I, I had to do something. And that was what what led me to, to the World um, Guide Foundation together with us. But maybe we come back to that. After listening to this, I think we should have added in her curriculum meeting. Uh, time management. <laughs> you must be an expert in time management. <laughs> and and now, Lars, what is your story and why is philanthropy so important for you? Uh, thank you, Ben, for asking. I, I am actually a mathematician and uh, I have had a business career and the the really remarkable thing for me is that at the age of 27, my my boss was leaving and uh, somebody had to, to take over uh, his job. And the owner of the company just called me in and said, okay, Lars, you, why, why, will you, why couldn't you be the CEO? And I said, okay, I never tried it before. But then he said, <laughs> you're a scout leader. Uh, and the scout leader knows how to, to make a plan, how to think forward, how to get the whole team uh, going with you, etc. So I think you'd be a good CEO. And I said, yes, I'll try. And, uh, and, and the rest is history. So I've had this, uh, this corporate career uh, and uh, I took a, a relatively large company public to NASDAQ and thereby uh, we were lucky of actually making more money than we uh, strictly speaking needed. And that actually led us into both philanthropy and, and investment into startups. And uh, the startup world has inspired me a lot. And I've been able to apply what I learned as a scout leader, because these are relatively small teams. We need to get things going. And uh, this was very valuable for me. And uh, I am proud to say that as a serial entrepreneur, I have failed more times than most people. I know <laughs> what many times? I know what bankruptcy means. <laughs> uh, and but Frank, but fortunately, uh, out of the twenty, uh, actually, it's about thirty uh, companies I have co-founded or or been engaged with. Uh, actually, about ten of them have been relatively su uh, quite successful, actually, which means that we have made uh, money so that we can do what we are mostly focusing on now, which is 
investing into young people, especially girls, really to move them forward, give them a better future. And you know what? We think that together with somebody, and maybe somebody is watching exactly this program, together with somebody, we can actually train five million girls before the end of this decade to equip them and prepare them to take action in the community and be leaders. That's really what this whole thing is about. And that's what motivates both of us tremendously. That's an extremely big number. Now we are, supposed, now we are going to have discussion about how you are going to do it. But <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I'm always inspired by couples as we are also one with Ben. So it's always great to see that uh, the line missions can create multiple good results yeah. and impact. Would you tell us more about the World Guide Foundation? So what is it about and what's the story behind it? Yeah, that be you. Yeah, uh, the World Guide Foundation gives us all an opportunity to do good things for other people. And that's what life is about. So um, by partnering with us, we get you uh, an opportunity, a vehicle uh, where you can do fantastic things for girls in this world. And uh, that's the reason why we established the World Guide Foundation was really that we have been involved in quite many um, programs, etc., supporting uh, girls and boys and a lot of young people, supporting young people, but we were never really satisfied with what we saw. We, we, were, we, we didn't really feel that, that the impact was as it should be, uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and the costs were far too high. So we thought that, that maybe we could do uh, something which was much better. Um, and to be quite frank, I had never imagined that we could do what we're doing today. Never. So uh, we established the World Guide Foundation because we wanted to really see real impact for less money. Uh, and I, I, I actually think I was the first one that said that. Okay. <laughs> Can, we not? Can we not be more that's cost okay. efficient? That's okay. Can we not be more cost efficient? And, uh, and uh, scouting is actually, in general, very cost efficient. But uh, compared to that, we thought we could do even better. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why, actually, uh, we set this, uh, like the goal, can we go to the moon? We actually set ourselves the goal and said, can we engage a girl into uh, scouting, which is also called guiding. I'll, I'll help you get the terminology right in a moment. But can we not engage a girl into this uh, for less than $2? Can we train a girl for three years at a cost less than $2? That is really... You are kidding. Less than $2 for two years. Well, yeah, and that's actually... Uh, I asked the question and we have provided the answer. <laughs> and the answer is yes, but how? How do you do that? What are the programs? What are they doing, the scout girls? Yeah, what are we doing? Well, we are partnering uh, with um, a number of, of, of girl guide uh, associations, organizations in Africa. Uh, we have also been in, in Malaysia, but that's, that's a different story. But, but right now we are engaging with um, 10 African countries uh, with their uh, national organization. And uh, and they, the way they work is like girl guiding, girl scouting everywhere. They work with a lot of volunteers. So that's that's the main reason why we can do it in, in, in a very cost-effective uh, way. But um, another explanation is that we, uh, we really have some requirements to the organizations we work together with. And we, the requirements are that uh, they have to be very disciplined. They have to, to, to send reports. We follow up every, once every month we follow up. And uh, so, so it's a question of hard work and discipline and, and, um, and passion, first of all, passion. And it has to be fun for everybody. It has to be, and really if, if 
to do what we are doing really um, is hard, hard work. But, but when we can do it in a way where we find it fun and uh, we and rewarding, then it's, then it's fine. And it's not only fun and rewarding for us, it's, it should be fun and rewarding for everyone, including those uh, many, 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 many volunteer leaders all over uh, Africa. They are volunteers, and that really means, it really means that they don't get any uh, salary, any money, uh, they are volunteers, um, and they, they work hard, all of them. May, may I go yeah, on from yeah. there? Yes. Imagine that you are some impact investor or philanthropist in the UK, and you want to uh, make a positive difference in Uganda. What would you do? You would uh, hire some expats that would go to Uganda and do projects. You would hire some local staff. You would build schools or whatever you would do. And the whole thing would actually be quite costly because you know what the cost, the annual cost of an expat is. Mm -hmm. What we are doing is the opposite. There are, there's not one single expat. There, and the local staff, there's one local staff person for every 1,000 adult volunteers. So imagine if you have a company with a thousand people and you do doing all sorts of things in the field, but you only pay a local salary to one of them. It mm -hmm. goes without saying that doing it that way is incredibly cost efficient. And that is the secret, secret behind the two dollars. And you might say, okay, how can we hire a thousand volunteers in Uganda? But the reason why we can do that is they already have about 10,000 volunteers in Uganda, the Uganda Girl Guides. They have around 10,000. And it's much easier to hire 10,000 more volunteers if you have 10,000 already. So we can help the Uganda Girl Guides hire another 10,000 volunteers. And then they will find out uh, to go out to schools and wherever they go and start Girl Guide units. And then they start. Uh, each volunteer may be able to cover like 20 or 40 girls. And that's the way it works. So the operation is virtually uh, costs virtually nothing. And that's the reason why if you take the foundation or philanthropist approach, I have never been close to anything that is so cost efficient. And the invitation we have and the, the, the purpose why we are actually talking to you is that we would like to give the opportunity to either a family that wants to leave a legacy to a corporation that would want to be associated with training 5 million girls <laughs> over the next decade. Who would or, not? Who would not? Or, <laughs> or a government agency or uh, whatever it is, a foundation, whoever wants to help us doing that. That's really what we hope. And uh, you obviously, the only thing we can promise is that we will work incredibly hard with whoever uh, wants to partner with us will work incredibly hard to make that happen. And That's good, great, right to the point, why you're talking to us at all. <laughs> Let's talk about impact, because I'd like to know what is your impact of these thousands of volunteers which are engaging on the society and environment, and also on the individual's life, so on these young yeah. girls. What does it bring to this young scout afterwards, after they've gone through your program? I, I might start and you okay, go. Okay. okay. <laughs> now, if a person, it, it could be a girl or a boy, becomes a scout, and actually terminology, scout and girl guide, think of it as the same thing. It's just two, two words for the same thing. And there are scouts that are female and male and guides, what have you. Just think of it as the same thing. But we are focusing on girls. Now, if a girl... Uh, joins the, 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 the Girl Guide program in Africa. She will be trained on average for three years. During that training, 
uh, she will actually go through the most uh, tested and well thought out non-formal education process that you've ever heard about, which is the scout method. She'll go through that under the guidance of volunteer leaders. Now that method works like this. When she enters, she will not go into a classroom. She will actually be in the outdoors, most likely in nature, and she will be confronted with challenges. Now, do this or find your way home, protect yourself from the sun or from the rain, or find something to eat, or what's that rock? Why is that rock that way? All sorts of challenges. Now, the art for the scout leader or guide leader is to find a challenge that's challenging, but not impossible. So, so maybe she has to try a few times, but she will eventually get it. And then she'll get a reward, which is a badge. And then next time she'll get a different challenge, it'll be more difficult for her. And gradually she will grow. And along the way, she will learn some useful skills, very good, but she'll learn something much more important. She will get self-esteem. Mm -hmm. I can do it. She will also be able better to work with others because in a girl guiding, some activities are individual, others are for a small group of girls. So she will, she will learn to appreciate that she might be good at doing this, but her neighbor might be good at doing something different. And together we can do everything. That is the essence of the scout method. And it's incredibly efficient because it takes place when young people are say 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 years, at a time when they are able really to learn. And then it's also very efficient because it's not directed by adults. It is supported by adults. So the scout leader or guide leader serves not as a mentor, not as a director. Mm -hmm. And during the, it, it's, this method has been refined for over 100 years. And during that time, it's actually been applied to more than a billion people. So there is nothing that works better. And this is very, the evidence is obvious, has been very well documented. So this is really the essence of this. Could I tell wow. about explain? Yeah, sure. now about impact of yeah. the society environment. Yeah. And could I start with the general impact? The, um, when, when it, uh, something I never thought of, uh, but working with Africa, I realized that um, the most important thing uh, for girl guides um, is really that when they, when girls engage with girl guiding, first of all, when a girl engages uh, with girl guiding, first of all, she doesn't get pregnant too early. I wouldn't have thought of that, but um, but we have been told that I think it was in Malawi, the government has said, please bring in as many girl guys as at all possible because it really helps us a lot because they don't become pregnant. This is of course not the, the only impact, but it's an extremely um, important impact because it changes the life, uh, it changes her future life. Uh, and the more, the, the other things uh, to mention is not only about pregnancy, but, but it's um, a girl who has trained as a girl guy is more likely to uh, get an education. She's more likely to get later to get a job. She's more likely to get a good job. She's more likely to become a leader in her society. And she's more likely to, to, um, to become interested in nature and to work with nature. Uh, so that's really, and, and, and after all, she's, she's more likely to um, engage with the local community and thereby be able to change things in her local community. Actually, I dare say that uh, girl guiding and scouting, scouting and guiding probably are by far 
the largest green organizations on earth. Uh, because there are like uh, 65 million of them. Each of them has been trained ab about learning about nature, learning about how to protect nature and all of that. And imagine that there are 65 million uh, people who actually take care of nature. And once they have completed their training, there are more than 500 million in uh, community leaders, business leaders, whatever they are, who have learned that. So I would claim that there is no organization in the world that makes a larger contribution to the sustainable development uh, goals than scouting. And by the way, the UN Secretary General agrees with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. And uh, I wanted to ask, what can you tell us more about the engagement of Her Royal Highness Princess Benedict of Denmark in the World Guide Foundation? Absolutely. That's you. Yeah. Her Royal, I'll, I'll start. I'm sorry. Her, yeah. Her Royal Highness. Yeah. Yeah. Her Royal Highness. She is, she is a fantastic patron. We are so proud of having her as a patron. And it's difficult to explain because, well, she's really a star. She is a star. She is so, she's such an inspiration to everyone. She can inspire uh, girls of uh, 10 years. Uh, or 18 years or um, 75, uh, 75 <laughs> or, or whoever it is, she's, she's really inspiring. She's very good to talk to people and she's also, and people that's also uh, donors, com contributors. Um, she is really good. And I really would hope that, that some of you from our audience would be able to meet Her Royal Highness. And what are the current projects right now that your volunteers or scouts are engaged in? Uh, we have one project. One. The only project we have is to recruit and train five million girls in Africa before the end of this decade. So this is a foundation, uh, unlike most others who have a hundred projects going, we have one project going to train, to recruit and train five million girls. And that project obviously takes, for the time being, takes place in 10 different countries. There are countries waiting for us. I think we've actually recruited this no, number 11 today. Yeah, yes, we have just made signed an agreement with the country number 11. So that's very exciting. So it, that's what it's all about. And I, I think you will be surprised. Of course, you cannot run uh, projects in 10 countries. We've recruited so far 800,000 girls in uh, Africa. I repeat that. 800,000 800, girls. girls. And you might say, oh. okay, we need, we need a foundation staff, all sorts of things, uh, people working with that. But you know what? We, are, we have a staff consisting of four volunteers, and she's one of them, four <laughs> volunteers who pay, get paid absolutely zero and work day and night <laughs> to actually make this happen, together with numerous, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of volunteers in all those countries. But this organization at its head office in Copenhagen, which is basically in our living room, uh, <laughs> nobody has gets a salary, and uh, that, I think that's very remarkable. This is a volunteer effort, and uh, that's why we have only one project. And how do you do that? You must have uh, have amazing marketing people to recruit eight hundred thousand volunteers. Like, how do you do that? What's the secret sauce? Yeah, we do it. First of all, we do it in ten different countries. And we work with the national organizations there. So we set up a, a first of all, we inspire the, 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 the national organization to set a high ambition. That's what we need, a high ambition. And uh, after that, we take them through a number of, of, I would call it exercises, so that we check um, how are they, are they able to do this? Um, and um, let me give you an example we started in, in Uganda, that was our first project. And um, they had an ambition, which was to more than double their organization um, 
and that means to double their capacity for training girls. And, and the, the starting point was 210,000, as far as I remember. And they ended up uh, within three years to have more than doubled. So they had 440,000 um, tra uh, training. Yeah. Uh, Basically, let me explain yeah. that. It, uh, this is something uh, to understand the numbers. Yeah. If, if Uganda say they have... Oh, from a mathematician, right? So, yeah, exactly. Yes. If Uganda has 450,000 members, they stay on an average for three years, which means that they are graduating 150,000 per year, which is in Uganda, there will be one and a half million girls that are trained over the next decade. So the the uh, that's how uh, the... Uh, the connection between membership and training capacity. So basically, Uganda can train 150,000 per year today. If we look at Africa as such, Africa today, after we have recruited 800,000 members, Africa now has a capacity to train 600,000 uh, girls per year. This is what we will increase to a capacity to train over a million per year. And, uh, and since uh, the growth will take uh, place gradually, actually before the end of the decade, we will at least have trained 5 million. And the good news is that uh, as part of the project uh, that we, uh, we plan to invest together with a partner, $10 million, the last part of that, or the, the, the second or third part of that, is actually building capacity so that this ability to train becomes permanent. So if we have trained 5 million before the end of the decade, our aim is during the next decade, based on what we've done now, we can actually train another 10 million because they can train a million per year. Yeah. So the, the impact on societies in Africa will be absolutely phenomenal. And if you look to, uh, to, to uh, Uganda, actually adding 150,000 potential leaders each year, even though Uganda is a relatively large country, this actually makes a big difference to their society. Absolutely. And you, you are talking about Africa, right? So this is your focus right now. Why only Africa? We need it everywhere in the world. Do you plan to extend to other countries? It's absolutely true that, that this is needed everywhere in the world, but it's, it's a good thing to, to, to focus um, on one place. We have, we have been involved in, in Malaysia and we, we ran a very successful project there, but we decided to kind of go back to Africa uh, where we want to involve more um, national organizations and we want to, uh, to go deeper uh, into the cooperation with some of the um, uh, countries we have worked with for quite a while. So we want to do more, uh, reach out to more countries and thereby to many more girls and young women, but also to work uh, more in, in depth with countries. And that's uh, not only about setting the ambition even higher, but it's also about uh, adding things uh, to what we have, have worked with. We would like very much to, to add something about financial literacy, uh, which is very much needed and very much wanted um, uh, in, in Africa. All our partner organizations are talking about uh, financial literacy, about and entrepreneurship, uh, and, and, entrepreneurship yeah. and um and, and we, we talk about sustainability, that's also about finance part. Um, but they, they are extremely interested and we, we start, all our projects have been started with a kind of an, an energy boost, uh, which is about um, social entrepreneurship, which, is all, which inspires them really not only to do a social entrepreneurship um, project, but to, to, to move to, to, build real to, to, uh, to build real companies. Yeah. That's of course small companies because all company, big companies have been small from the beginning. Yeah. Yes. Well, you, you asked the question, why don't we do it in Latin America? Oh, yeah. 
Why don't we do it in Asia? And frankly speaking, if somebody says, okay, let's do it in Asia, we'll do it in Asia as well. It'll yeah. take another five volunteers, I yeah. think, to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Only, right? So much. How difficult can that be? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, and, and you have been involved so long. Can you name some, some girl guides or scouts who are well-known personalities? Yeah, uh, people who have really a, a scout background and who are really personalities, well, very well known. Yes, I could mention, uh, let me start with Mich Michelle Obama. <laughs> Everybody knows Michelle Obama. Wow, she came, she came from a girl's guide? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah, absolutely. Oh, her husband was a girl scout. Uh, and and, and all, by the way, all the uh, presidents and, and uh, of U.S., uh, And yeah, since Eisenhower. Oh, since Eisenhower. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yes, I'm not sure about Lincoln and Washington. No, but they were actually all Boy Scouts. Uh, <laughs> and uh, many of them were Eagle Scouts, which is the highest award you can uh, achieve. Unfortunately, one of them uh, didn't make it into scouting, uh, really. And you may guess who it was. It was a re it's a recent president. He didn't make it. <laughs> Uh, but actually, it's quite striking that if you look at uh, world leaders in general, uh, politicians, business leaders, leaders in science, leaders in arts, leaders in sports, leaders in it, entertainment, a lot of them have a scout background. And you know, if you take the US, Condoleezza Rice uh, was an avid uh, Girl Scout, uh, Madeleine Albright, just to take two secretaries of state, Rex Thank Tillerson, you. who was Secretary of State recently, uh, was President of the Boy Scouts of America, really great uh, scout. And by the way, do you know how many people actually walked on the moon? One. Uh, Twelve people have walked on the moon. Eleven were scouts. Oh. Well, we missed something. <laughs> And if you look, actually, this tiny country of Denmark, uh, I did a survey at one time of the 100 most successful business leaders. More than half of them had a scout background. So, so what we see, there are about six, seven hundred million people in the world who have the scout background. But if you take that subset of the population where Uh, you look at people with a leadership role in one way or the other, I wouldn't be surprised if at least one third of those and maybe half of those have a scout background. And I meet them all the time when I'm at seminars, conferences, business meetings, uh, lots of scouts. Fortunately, some people are great leaders without having been scouts. So we'll, we'll work yes. with them as well. <laughs> Can I mention Can I make sure? Yes, I remember um, there are some studies in, in the US that um, that more than 40% percent of, of business uh, female business owners they have a scout background. So it's it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, and just translate that into impact. Yes. If you obviously, uh, if there are 600 millions, of course there may be a hundred million who hasn't who haven't got it, but. <laughs> But maybe at least five million, yeah. 500 million have got it. Imagine uh, the impact they have because they are in touch with 10 times as many people. And in their work, they have acquired skills that will make them do it better. And, they, and the whole thing is based on a value system, which actually includes taking care of the environment. So if we can actually increase the number of people who are trained as scouts, I think we can make an additional enormous contribution to the, the sustainable development goals. Exactly. Lars Iveke, but do you think to collaborate with other scouting organizations and to make them, how to say, understand that uh, they should also recruit more girls to, yeah. to make, to, to, for them to inc increase this impact by including more girls into scouting? Yeah. That the good news is that if you look at the world, uh, roughly, and these are rough figures, 65 million uh, young people are currently under scout training. Uh, 
just under half of those are already girls. So, and many organizations throughout the world are actually aiming for having an equal number or even more girls. So girls are being recruited, not only uh, for the, the guide, girl guides, but also for the scouts and everywhere. Mm -hmm. so, so scouting actually and guiding plays a major role in training girls and thereby contribute to gender equality. Uh, so uh, that's already happening. And we are, of course, very happy that 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 uh, they work with gender equality, but um, but but scouts and guides all over the world also work with a lot of other uh, of the uh, sustainable girls, the UN sustainable girls. Goals. So, yeah. Goals. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, not girls, but goals. <laughs> goals. <laughs> goals. Yes. 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 <laughs> uh, so so uh, we really have an impact on all the all these uh, development sustainable goals and 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 do you is there a certain age where you're focusing on of the girls i think that um either we can use these statistics uh, or or we can or we can say oh there are many different countries etc the, the most uh, usual um, age to to start at is in in many african countries would be uh, 10 to 12 years something like that but but it, it differs from country to country, and uh, some take them from six years, and some from uh, nine years, and uh, some uh, that's that's different. And it's interesting because what we when we say we want to turn girls and young women into into the, tomorrow's leaders, uh, you could uh, you could ask how can you train a six year old girl to become a leader, um, and that's that's actually possible because. If you if you train um, and and that's what we do, train girls to to solve problems, to cooperate with others, to uh, look around and see what should be done here, and then uh, make a decision, hopefully together with other people, and make a decision. Say this is what we do, and then we go for it. That's that really that makes a leader, and uh, that can be done. The impact leadership. Role impact starts already when you're six years. Yeah. Frankly, or, yeah. if I may be very <laughs> blunt, if I'm very blunt, you know, look at uh, the most prominent business schools, Harvard, Wharton, Stanford, who train the world uh, world's finest leaders and get the highest salaries, etc. You know what? The difference a good scout leader can make to a 9, 10, 12, 13, 14 years, I will guarantee is as high as the one that Harvard makes. Probably so, higher. Probably <laughs> higher, yeah. Because you can form young people. And we, we have four children, and they've all been scouts. And we, we have seen how scouting and guiding has changed their life, has taught them to take responsibility for each other, has taught them to care for nature, has taught them to be curious and and uh, courageous and all of that. This is what this is what millions and millions of young people get through scouting, and that's what we hope. This training. Imagine if we can train one million girls in Africa per year to acquire those attitudes, skills and uh, these aspects of personality. Wow. That's what we want to do. Yes, it will change Africa and it will change the world. Yeah. Absolutely. And guys, you face any challenges on the way or is it all amazing and <laughs> no, no, nothing comes on your way when you're trying to achieve your goals? Uh, yeah, there are, I think the, first of all, actually, although this can be done for about $2 per girl trained, which is a ridiculously low number. But still, if you want to train 5 million, you have to raise 10 million. And uh, although we've done well with our various uh, startups that we have sold, etc., uh, we have uh, financed the first million, uh, but we cannot finance the next $10 million. So that's why I think the greatest obstacle we have in front of us 
is actually to find that partner who uh, who can see the interest in, you know, we, we're not asking for help. We are giving another organization, could be foundation, family, co corporation or whatever. We're giving that partner the opportunity to make an impact that they would guaranteed not be able to make without this. That's the idea. And if we can overcome that obstacle, I'm actually quite optimistic we can make it happen. Yeah, exactly. And, and you're looking at it as a philanthropic support or as an investment support? I, I would call it an impact investment, uh, really. It is, and the return is dramatic. Not only training five million uh, girls, but imagine the the uh, that if they actually acquire leadership skills, each of them will impact for, uh, 10 others and they'll continue to do so for the next 50 years. Yeah. So it's a gigantic <laughs> impact. And I don't think any project that, that I can imagine could have a similar impact. And the opportunity is, I'm sure somebody will say, we'd like to, to uh, work with that. We'll do the work. Uh, but we need the financing. So I call it impact investment. And so in our terminology, investment is when you get the money back, right? So here it's like, uh, we would rather call maybe impact first investors, the ones who are really into impact, right? And see, can see the multiplication of the impact, which is going to be in the world, also in numbers, like you are, says yeah. you're a mathematician. Absolutely. Absolutely. For example, if you look into the social bond of UK, that's an example like that. So, oh, that's very good. And uh, and how can our audience support you? Uh, I would suggest, actually, uh, you know, we don't want a hundred people to call us and discuss this with us. So, if you really, uh, <laughs> if, not? if you don't. If you say they have only two volunteers, <laughs> this, is, when, this is spot on. This is exactly what we have been looking for. Then we'd actually like to talk to uh, talk to to uh, whoever it is. And there's a WorldGuideFoundation.org website where Vivica's email and phone number, I even think, uh, is there. <laughs> so we'd like to talk to those who say, okay. This is something that could be interesting for us, and uh, and uh, and we are open to. There may be somebody who said, "Okay, maybe ten million dollars is to the high side. Then we'll do five or two. And if it's to the low side, we'll we help you. More. We'll help you. Uh, so we'll be open to that. Uh, what we want is uh, partners, a partnership uh, with somebody who shares our a vision for training 5 million people and after that hopefully training 1 million per year for exactly. but there are also a lot of kind of foundations and, and companies and corporations who are also focusing very much on educating or supporting women all around the world mainly in the emerging market yeah they may also be very very good partners yeah what we cannot uh, you know you said get the money back of course you won't get the money back, but you'll get something which is much more important. So, yeah. so call it an investment or call it a grant. It's up. It's up to yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the point is that I think that whoever is engaged in this space would want to claim correctly that they have actually made this enormous difference, and yeah. this has value. It may have a commercial value. You, if you think of a brand that uh, that is especially related to women, has great commercial value. We can't offer that all girl guides will have a badge on their uniform. Won't, won't, won't happen. But at least <laughs> being associated with this has a certain value and could even, could could have could be worth it. But what we really hope is somebody says, okay, we want to we want to leave that legacy, yep. and let's do it. I can already think of quite a lot of wrote down quite a lot of names here, which I think are foundations who are really looking like projects like yours. That's great, guys. The time is running out, but we still have time for a call to action from your side. Maybe each of you and I think ladies first. 
<laughs> well, our a call, call to action, yeah. Our call for action is really come and join with us because what we what we are working with is it's incredible. Uh, it's you have never seen anything like that, and uh, we want somebody, some serious partner, partners uh, to join with us because we want really to to reach our goal, which is five million more girls and young women. Great. Uh, I can't add anything. <laughs> that, it, that's it. That's what we'll do. <laughs> That's great. Very clear and right to the point. Thank you very much for sharing with I, us. I really liked it. You keep completely focused from the starting to the end. That is only about the five million. And I'm <laughs> after listening to you, I'm hundred percent sure we will get it. Okay. Thank it's you very good. much. Thanks for inviting us to join. Thank you. Uh, we'll be just delighted to work with whoever wants to work with us. Thanks a lot. And before you leave, we'd like to give you also a little present. First of all, is a honorary membership of our community, Camomile Impact Investment Community. Please register and we will upgrade it. And second, to give you an impact leader certificate, which you both truly are. So welcome to our world as well. Exactly. Thank you very much. And thank you very much. On, the on the Camomile community, you can also uh, put the world guide foundation over there which would be so perfect. people get to, to know it more and maybe one or the other will join as a scout or some might because, provide you some donations yeah because there's the massive financial institutions also present there so yeah. that and because i think your your vision matches the visions of many foundations so that's sure. amazing thank you sure. so very much Thank you. And we see you in Denmark, I guess, yeah. right? Yeah. Thank you to you and see you. Uh, Thank you. Bye, we, Lars. Bye, Vivek. We forgot to ask them the weather. It must be very cloudy and rainy there at this moment. <laughs> Ciao. It's okay. It's, everything is so colorful, so we will survive. See, see you then. Bye. 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 Yeah. Thank you for joining. Well, dear viewers, with this, we finish the 12th episode of season five. And next week, we will be back with an amazing business which is producing a unique cycle which you never seen before, most probably, but which might revolutionize next generation of bicycles. And Ben already, ben already tried it out. Yeah, already tried so it more out. about <laughs> it next week. <laughs> Please don't forget to subscribe on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Swiss Impact. And then you always will be updated with the recent news from impact world so looking forward to seeing you next week <laughs> and everyone who thinks you are impactful enough and you are ready to be our guest reach out and talk to us we will be more than happy to show your impact in the world and for now you get more when you get back so always invest with impact <laughs> hi we hope you enjoyed this episode of tv show Swiss Impact with Energies. Make sure you check out the next one and also find us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Spotify, podcasts, and any of your favorite social media places. And please subscribe to our channel so you know when we release new episodes. And also leave us some feedback to help us grow this awesome impact community and join it. We look forward to sharing the next episodes with you. And until then, you get more when you give back. So always invest with impact.